In the space below, draw the position of both balls each moment in time to explain the outcome. Also draw the velocity vectors Vx, that's the horizontal velocity, and Vy on the balls each moment, okay? So let's first start with this um, dropped ball, okay? Uh, the dropped ball, after it's released from rest, it falls um, a little bit. Say its next position is down here. And it falls a little bit more. Maybe its next position is here. Falls a little bit more. And finally, when it hits the table, its position is down here, okay? And I should, I'm gonna adjust this one because it, I need to show that the rate at which it's moving is accelerating. So it's probably gonna look a little bit more like that, okay? But the distance between positions is increasing as it falls. I'm gonna exaggerate this one a little bit more. There we go. All right, as this one falls, um, in, this, in this first position, it has a downward vertical velocity, which is um, quite a small vector because it's not going very fast. Then it speeds up a little bit at this moment. The next moment, it speeds up quite a lot. And in the last moment, it has a lot of velocity just before it hits the ground. Let me exaggerate that even more, okay? So the velocity is increasing in the negative direction as the ball falls. Okay, the other ball that's shot forwards, this one, is both falling and moving to the right, and it's doing them at the same time, okay? So this first, this ball that's shot forward, its, um, it's first position is gonna be uh, like over here, falls a little bit, and then it's going to be over here. And so let me, the path is kind of like this, right? The next moment it's going to be here. The next moment it's going to be here. The next moment it's going to be here, just before it hits the table, okay? Well, while it's shot forward, it has now this horizontal velocity, right? It got a horizontal velocity from the spring-loaded launcher. And so as it falls, it moves to the right. Okay. Now I have drawn the length, I've drawn the length of all of these arrows exactly the same because the horizontal velocity will remain constant. It will not accelerate in the horizontal direction because gravity does not act on it horizontally. Okay. Once the ball is released from the launcher, it will move forward at constant speed just as if the ball was, uh, was rolled on, uh, along a table. Once it's released, it rolls at constant speed in the same way, even flying through the air, it flies through the air at constant speed in the horizontal direction. Now, simultaneously though, it, uh, it is falling. And um, actually, this, uh, this velocity should not be here yet. So um, one moment after it's launched, it starts to fall, right? The next moment, it continues to fall, but it starts to pick up speed in the vertical direction. The next moment, it's now really moving fast in the vertical direction, and just before it hits the table, it has a lot of vertical velocity, okay? Uh, the same as, as, uh, as this one over here. And so I can adjust them a little bit to show you that they would both hit the ground, hit the table at the, uh, at the same velocity, okay? Now, um, the idea here is to explain the outcome, right? So here we go. Uh, both balls hit the ground at the same time. I'm gonna switch colors. Because they are both accelerating downwards. at the same rate, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? 
In fact, the launched ball's horizontal velocity The launch ball's horizontal velocity has nothing to do with its vertical motion. Okay. In other words, this uh, these horizontal velocities are almost a distraction. Right, They don't matter. It does not matter that the ball is launched to the right because in the vertical direction, it is in free fall the whole time. Now, um, that explains the outcome with vectors, uh, and it explains it in an illustration. But how could we explain the outcome quantitatively? Like, what would the numbers actually look like? Well. Um, if this was a four second journey, a four second fall, which in the video, it certainly is not a four second event, but let's say we extended it. Let's say we put the launcher up much, much higher so that it did take the balls four seconds to hit the ground. Then what would the velocities of both objects uh, be each second? Well, for the dropped ball, its horizontal velocity would be zero each time because the dropped ball is not pushed horizontally. It's just moving vertically, okay? In the vertical direction, it would be released from rest, so its initial vertical velocity would be zero. One second later, it would speed up to negative 9.8 meters per second. Then one second later to negative 19.6, then to negative 29.4, and finally to negative 39.2, following the rules of free fall where any object in free fall, if air resistance is neglected, will just increase its velocity in the negative direction by 9.8 meters per second every second, okay? Now, what about the launched ball? What would its velocities look like? Well, um, let's assume that the launched ball is launched at, I don't know, five meters per second, okay? I'm just picking a number. Um, I'm gonna say horizontally, right? So if the launch ball is launched horizontally at five meters per second, then um, at time zero, the horizontal velocity would be five. And then one second later, the horizontal velocity would still be five and would remain five the whole journey because it's not accelerating in the horizontal direction. Gravity does not act horizontally on the ball. It only acts vertically, okay? And if we're ignoring air resistance, there are no horizontal forces on the ball as it falls. But vertically, well, it's released. Uh, it falls just like the dropped ball. So after one second, it would accelerate uh, in the vertical direction and it would reach negative 9.8 meters per second. And then the next second in the vertical direction, 19.6. And it would follow the rules, excuse me, 0.4 of free fall in the vertical direction all the way down. So that these velocities on the dropped ball perfectly match these velocities on the launched ball. This is why they hit the ground at the same time. All right, extending this to a new situation. Suppose you shot a bullet horizontally out of a gun, okay? So now let's take the experiment and go to high speed. You shoot a bullet horizontally out of a gun in the middle of a barren desert so that the bullet hit no target and ultimately landed on the ground, perhaps a mile away, right? Very far away, you're shooting a bullet. Suppose also that your friend was with you and she dropped an identical bullet from the same height at the same time which would hit the ground first, a bullet dropped or a bullet shot, assuming that they both start at the same height. And then explain your thinking, okay? So we're taking a similar scenario to this, but now this horizontal velocity might be like a thousand feet per second, okay?
okay, it's bullet speed, would that affect the outcome of the experiment? Um, if you have these notes, I would invite you to click the link to actually watch the Mythbusters repeat this experiment. And what they find is that the outcome is not affected by the fact that the bullet is shot really, really fast, okay? So um, instead, they hit the ground at the same time again. Okay, the shot bullet falls at the same rate as the dropped bullet. Regardless of the fact that it is moving at high velocity. So again, the horizontal motion is just a distractor. It has nothing to do with the rate at which it will fall. In the next video, I'm going to show you a second demonstration of projectile motion.